Here we have Kakarillo no Yadomeshi or Kakarillo uh, Bed and Breakfast for Spirits with the title episode I'm Marrying Into an Inn with Spirits. So boy, I wonder what's going to happen. It's your standard slice of life uh, uh, plus supernatural shit. So uh, it's pretty old timey Japanese. If you like the Shamisen, if you like the soft flute, tea ceremonies, kimonos, you know, mortise and tenon architecture, all that good stuff. Uh, stick around. It is a slice in life, though, so if you don't like the characters, I mean, that's what the show's about, so, you know, if you don't like them, leave. Run while you still can! So basically, we open with the Shamisen opening, and that's really cute. And then, once we actually start the story, it's about, uh, this little girl. Well, what's happening with the little girl? She's starving and dying? I don't know. I think she's starving. They're not really specific. She's definitely dying, and she's like, I'm gonna die soon. And then some demon's like, hey, here's some food. She's like, oh my god, I'm not going to die anymore. So I guess she was starving. And of course she can see demons because, yeah, you know, what Japanese kid can't? And her mother abandons her because, uh, you know, don't just believe that this kid's got too many imaginary friends. Of course you believe that she has de- she can see demons. So definitely get away from that kid. She's taken in by her grandpa, who we see in a couple of flashbacks where he's like, you should learn how to cook. Hey, don't worry, I could see demons too, or whatever. And then we jump to the future, uh, where he's dead. He died, like, you know, a couple of days ago. She's on her way to work slash school. Uh, I don't really remember. It was definitely a place with a lot of people. You know, work or school. Anywho, on the way there, uh, she sees a demon. A bunch of demons, really. She, she sees some kappa, and she feeds them. And then she mentions how you shouldn't really make eye contact with some demons. That's how they get you. It's like uh, making eye contact with one of those people in the corner trying to sell shit. Shouldn't have done it. So she makes eye contact with a dude with an Oni mask uh, sitting down calmly. It looks like he's probably going to be a pretty boy if he just takes off that stupid mask. Uh, And he's like, boy, I sure am hungry. And she's like, god damn it. All right, here, take my lunch, bro. And he's like, thanks, this is pretty good. So she leaves, and then when she comes back later... Uh, there's more food there, and she's like, oh shit, it was a nice demon, he fucking left me a reward, and then she grabs it, uh, because, you know, don't be wary of anything, ever, uh, and she gets sucked into the shadow realm, uh, turns out, it's time to duel, not really, so the demon that she gave food to is actually an old friend of her grandpa, and he was an asshole, because he ran up a bunch of debt one night and promised his daughter's hand in, or granddaughter's hand in marriage as collateral on his loan of 100 million yen, which is, you know, approximately a million dollars. It's about a yen to a penny. I think the yen's actually a little weak right now. <laughs> I digress. Uh, so she's like, no, fuck you. I am a strong, independent black woman. I don't need no man. I'm going to work here instead and pay off his debt. And he's like, that's... That's ridiculous. Like, like everyone here hates you. And if you're not my wife, I can't protect you. You'll just be another employee and you got to deal with all the rules of whoever is in charge of you and whatever. So she's like, fuck you. I'm going to do it. I'm a strong, independent lady. Uh, just let me work in the kitchen. I'm good at cooking. Women aren't allowed to work in the kitchen. What kind of backwards world is this where women aren't allowed in the kitchen? All right, whatever. I'll find a job. Fuck you. So she searches all over for a job, and everyone either straight up tells her no or meekly is like, oh, I'm sorry, there are no jobs here, fuck you. Uh, Until she finds a hallway with a bunch of fucking glowing arrows pointing down it, some sort of MacGuffin hallway, which leads to an abandoned restaurant that was closed like two days ago on the same day that her grandfather died. Uh, They don't really point that out, but I thought it was weird. Anywho, uh, so nobody nobody runs this fucking restaurant, and some cool fox dude that she met earlier is in there, and he's like, yeah, uh, nobody runs this restaurant. It doesn't matter what business opens up here. They all close. And so she's like, well, fuck, man. Uh, sounds perfect. I'll take it. I'll I'll run the restaurant. I'll cook. Uh, people love my food. Oh, but no, demons won't like your food. I mean, I guess they are getting tired of the food at the inn, and they do want something different. Uh... But you couldn't possibly make anything different. Fuck you, man. I can make human food. I make the most different food. Have you ever had fucking omelet rice? No? Let's have omelet rice. Sounds like a delicacy. Yeah, it sure is. That's pretty much it. That's that's the end of the episode. Uh, Not much happened. She got sucked into the demon world. 
asked to marry this dude, well, kind of told she was going to marry this dude, uh, told him to fuck off, and then decided to reopen a recently closed demon restaurant to pay off her grandpa's debt. Like I said at the beginning, slice of life. I can't really think of anything that correlates to this well, but, you know, it's a character piece, so if you like the characters, watch it. If you like the setting, watch it. If you ain't got nothing better to do, watch it. But you surely you do. Like I said, uh, 40 anime this season, so that's a guesstimate, but still. There are plenty. Plenty of fish in the sea, everyone. See you next time.